We are live. Ladies and gentlemen, you once again welcome to the King Dames podcast. And today I have with me a very special guest. Uh, William is the CEO of Tribe Combat Sports. How are you, William? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, wow. How are you wow. doing, sir? Uh, uh, I can I cannot complain. The only thing I, I am complaining about right now is the great British weather. <laughs> the, I'm the in weather the Norwegian is... weather here, so I, I feel your pain. Oh wow, wow! Like the weather just needs to decide. Do you want to? Do you want to be hot or do you want to be cold? Do not stay somewhere in between. Just let me know what you want to do. <laughs> it's, 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 it's crazy. I think it's, um, for some people, some people have, you know, the seasonal depression, right? Mm. Especially with the cold. Uh, does it happen with you? Like, you yeah, just, it does actually, yeah. The, the weather so I usually try to like, I usually time my vacation when it's oh! the darkest. <laughs> so I, I escape to the sun. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. interesting. So, speaking of escaping to the sun, was that one of the reasons why you escaped to Gambia the other time? Yeah, this this year or, or last year, I was in Gambia in September and, and this year in January. So I prolonged my summer uh, quite a lot this year last year wow interesting interesting <laughs> like, like, let's 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 speak about gambia right briefly mm. uh your, your your promotion had this successful event in in the gambia recently yes you, you want to talk a bit about it yes so uh we start in the gambia but our like grand vision is to travel around west africa and, and host events everywhere and, and also to make this like an international league, but international league in Africa. So that's that's the grand vision. And uh, yeah. in the Gambia, we're quite lucky to have uh, quite a vast network that enable, enables us to like move quite swiftly and easy. And uh, also the big, big wrestling culture in the Gambia and the neighbor Senegal is, is very interesting. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I, big market there so also strategically for us this is a great starting point so we had an event uh, on the 26th of uh, january where we had fighters from angola congo ivory coast senegal and then one local gambian wrestler as well um so we had four fights this time like our pilot event uh, and we also built a global digital streaming platform that's going to launch on the 19th of March. So where everyone Fantastic. can log in for free and watch the event and, and all the other content we made. Oh, wow. Interesting. But for, for now, the content, is it on YouTube? For now, it's it's being um, worked on. Well, what, uh, how oh, can I say it? Worked okay. on there. Because we didn't send it live this time. So okay. we, we took the, the tips home and adding graphics and everything back home. And then we're going to showcase okay. everything soon. Interesting, interesting. Because I saw snippets, snippets of the event on on your Instagram page. Like, yeah, this yeah. Is really beautiful, like a proper African, you know, MMA promotion. The African, you know, uh, culture, the African yeah. art, the African yes. graphics that you guys used. Uh, I have never seen something that rivals that in terms of the Africanness of you know the arts and the graphics that you guys you guys did, did a really really great job right but then you, so you know much. we're talking we're talking we're talking about the promotion right but then let, let's let's yeah. take a step back and talk about the man behind the promotion right let's get to know you as a person like how would you describe yourself as a person it's me and 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 my my closest friend that started this together uh he couldn't make it today but um I think my friends will describe me as a hard worker and uh, I'm quite a maniac when I when I find a subject that interests me I'm I'm going all in and uh mm. we can talk about anything but I'm always going to go back to this subject that I'm interested in and focused on so um I never give up I keep pushing and I I do whatever it takes to make my dream come true 
interested. I'm also interested. very family oriented, so I'm I'm keeping a close uh, relationship with my family. I have a wife, and my firstborn will be born in May this year. So you did not. You, you, let, 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 let me let me interrupt you there, right? You say you have yeah, a yeah. wife, but then you you did not yeah. say the complete story. You have a beautiful wife. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> important, importantly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Great wife. Yeah. I'm I'm a very yeah. lucky man. Mm. Wow, wow. I, I hope to be fortunate like you, you know. Let me let me also have a beautiful wife. You know, it's not just enough to have a wife. You know, <laughs> in, in Nigeria, when you see men, they ask they, they say, Okay, this man is happily married. And then they say, okay, this man is married. So are you married or happily married? <laughs> you, see, you see this smile right here? <laughs> oh yeah. That's Extremely a man happily that, married. Yeah. That, that, that is a man that is happily, happily married. And of course, about to be happily married with you know with, with, with the child. Fantastic. You're Bless. blessed, you're blessed, man. You're blessed. Bless, so but um how's growing up like for you? Like uh you grew up in Scandinavia or yeah. I grew up in Norway, my mom is Norwegian, and my dad is from Ivory yeah. Coast. Interesting. Why wow, you guys beat us in the in the finals of the Afcon? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Afcon, the Afcon finals. I'm still, yes. I still have beef for you guys. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <sexual>. <laughs> if you, if wow. I've told you beforehand, you wouldn't have invited me on. I'm telling you, I wouldn't have invited you. Why? <laughs> Would that's I why that's why i kept quiet <laughs> <laughs> why why did you guys why did you guys beat us i was called the first goal like why <laughs> i need to get was a hold of sebastian haller I, I need to get a hold of that guy why why did why did, why did you score that goal <laughs> but it's fine it's fine you know like you growing up um the mixed race basically Ivorian, yes. Norwegian, he grew up in Norway, right? Yeah. So, like, what was it like, you know, growing up as a mixed race a kid? And I, I think some mixed race pe persons sometimes tend to have some sort of identity crisis because, yes, yes. Uh, am I white? Am I black? Um, growing up yeah. in a place wherein, you know, people feel like um, I don't very much belong or something, mm. but they're like, how 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 is it like for you and like who were your early life influences i think everything you said is true but i was quite lucky because um you connect me more to my family at ivory coast my my father and mother sent me to the french school here in norway oh, wow. so so in, in that school i had like we're just two two classes two um 48 students per per um how do you say in English? Per, per age class? group or per, per oh, class? Oh, per age group. Oh, yeah, per class. Yeah. So 24, 24 in each class. And there I had uh, three Ivorians, mixed race like me. Oh, and wow. One Gambian. And, and other African nations just in that small group. A Congolese uh, class classmate as well. So we were quite wow. tight all together. And I think we, it was very important growing up that I had like this group of, uh, of classmates around me. Um, diversity, basically you had diversity and inclusion in your classroom. Yes. And, and when I was 10, my mother said, okay, now it's time for you to get to know your family back home in your other country, in your second country. And then three months later, she had rented out the apartment, and I was in the village in Ivory Coast. And I went Whoa. to school there for a year. Yeah. So uh, she really blessed me with that trip. That really like made made me whole. So when I when I came back to Norway to the French school, I had a Ivorian French accent and everything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. I really think that a uh, trip was essential for for my identity growing up, and, mm. uh, and then yeah. you were able to connect to your roots. Yes, yes. Wow. So now coming back to Norway, like at, at what point mm. of time was that? Coming back to Norway, like how old were you at that point in time? When I came back. 
Yeah, yeah. When you, when you, when you came back to Norway, a little like over eleven years old. Time. Oh wow, wow! And then say, you know, like at that very early age, you had been able mm. to connect with your roots. You have a strong yes. sense of identity in terms of your African origins, right? And yes. then um, everybody can tell you you are who you are not, <laughs> right? True. But then you 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 seem to be multilingual, right? You speak French, yeah. you speak English, yes. you speak Norwegian, right? What what else what else do you speak? I'm trying to learn. Uh, my wife is from Bosnia. Bosnia Herzegovina. Yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn the language a bit. It's it's hard, but I'm but I'm getting there. Hopefully soon. Oh, wow. Like a bit, few people from there, their language sounds quite complex. This is wow. tough. Then you you you, <laughs> you you are most legal. You you you, you 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 can have it right. But then, like growing up, like who who are the people you looked up to? Like who are those um, influences that you know um, helped shape the trajectory of your life? I think I think all my my friends, to be honest, because um, in my group of friends, nobody is. Do you, do you say A four in in Britain? Like the the people that work eight to four, nobody works eight to four. Oh, <laughs> nine to five. <laughs> Nine to five, right? Nine to five. It's eight to four here in Norway. Uh, nine oh, to wow. five, yeah. We have uh, um, I have a lot of professional athletes, a lot of high skilled uh, musicians, and also entrepreneurs. Wow. So it was just a matter of time before I found my own way and journey. I think. Oh, interesting. So, so I've speak, always speak, been speak inspired, like since a young age. Yeah. Oh wow. So, so speak, sp speaking of that, right, like you had yeah. um, entrepreneurs, right, around you, like sort of shaped Shit. your mm. influence. Now, your educational background, like what was, what was the educational background like for you, right? And uh, you never did a nine to five. Is that, is that, is that what you say? Or, or did you at any point do a nine to five? For me, I think. I, I work at nine to five, and and some of them do, but but the main mission is is not a nine to five. So so everybody is is on the grind and and on on the path of following their dreams. Oh. So uh, my educational background is just I just finished college. Oh wow! It just so I, I have I have no degree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, wow. Seriously, and then you're doing a lot of great stuff for yourself, right? You know, you know, for <laughs> because, me, it's, it's great if you find your field in um, at university, if you find something you love to do, it's great. Yeah. But I didn't find anything that could help me do what I do now. Oh, wow. Interesting. Interesting. So, so, so I'm, like, I'm self-taught. I've self read books. I've watched videos. I've, I've like studied myself to learn what I need to know to make this happen hmm. for years. So you went to, you, 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 you went to, I don't know like what the educational system is like over there, went to hmm. high school, but then you said you just finished yeah. college. Is college like a university? Uh, uh, 13 years of school. Like how do you say that school. before the university, like the last uh Okay, 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 okay. Wow, wow. You know, back in Nigeria, like we place a lot of premium mm -hmm. on you know education, you know. Yeah, some people in Nigeria feel like, oh, you cannot even be successful if you're not educated and all, but you know, growing up, we now discovered that mm -hmm. success in life is not just about education, it's about applying yourself to to learning even outside of True. the four walls of a classroom and finding yeah. something that you're passionate about, being resourceful to people and, you know, creating, creating a value for people. Because when you create value for people, people are able to give you money in exchange for the I value agree. that you create for them. Right. That is true. So that, that actually does help people to be resourceful and be relevant in society. Right. Wow. That, that's, that's, that's a really, really fantastic one. That's a really fantastic one. But then, you know, you at some point went into MMA, right. Yeah. Uh, as a fighter, 
did you go pro or like what really inspired you to go into uh, mixed martial arts? We started with Thai boxing. Me and my my co-founder Usman years back. And then there were just there were this MMA class next door, like in the same gym. That we always had to walk through to get into the Thai boxing class. So one day I just thought to myself, maybe I should just go and check this out. And oh, then wow, I, I started my MMA journey. Um, I never went pro. I dipped my toes in, like in the semi-pro leagues. Had three fights, two losses, one win. And But I was wow. fortunate to, to be able to train with a lot of elite guys here in Norway. So I'm very happy for, for that. Uh, Jack Romanson. Oh, uh, from, from the, the UFC. UFC. Yeah, yeah, and Emil Meg, that was in the UFC previous. And also Kenneth Barik, a great, great name here in Norway, light heavyweight guy. So I was with them at the pro team at Frontline Academy for four or five years. Wow. So that's where I fell in love with the sport. And then you, you just like kept on going. So why, why, why did you go pro? Why I never went pro? Mm -hmm. To be honest, this idea came up. And MMA is not something you compete in if you're not 100% committed. That's when yeah. you get hurt. So when this yeah. idea came up a little over five years ago, then I I could never like shake the the thought of building this this league and the vision of making it happen was taking over. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Wow. So he decided that if I'm not going to be a participant in the sport, I'm going to be a promoter of the sport. Apparently, yeah. you, you, you can make more money be, being a promoter <laughs> because you're, you're literally becoming some some, some African some. dinner whites <laughs> of some, <laughs> <of> some sort. <laughs> you know, for me, it was never about the money. Um, it was more about giving something back to Africa. And from my point of view, the only way Africa can rise if is, is if the diaspora goes back with the knowledge and everything we gain here in the West and, 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 and builds Africa back up again. Increase the workforce, give uh, athletes and people a chance to prove themselves and give them the opportunity to shine and become something great give them a huge platform of international standard where they can showcase themselves that's like the, the, the passion in it for me mm. so like you you speak a lot about you know promoting africa like mm. you're very very passionate about the africanness of your brand right now yeah. speaking of that and we all know that the the, the elite level the premier um mma promotion in the world is the ufc right yeah and speaking of ufc africa yeah yesterday was just um or last night was just ufc 299 but before yeah. we talk about ufc 299 let us talk about ufc africa right mm. you know they've been pushing the idea of ufc africa happening mm. Or mm. in the era of the three kings it never happened yeah. that was um Kamaru Usman, Israel Adesanya, and um, Francis Ngannou, right? We did not see mm. UFC Africa happening. But right now, it seems like three calls to C of South Africa seems to be pushing, pushing yeah. that idea of, you know, UFC Africa, mm. right? And we, we all know what happened with the whole rivalry between Adesanya and... Uh, Duplessis. And Drakus. And yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah, Drakus. Feeling like Drakus is not like the true African, and he feels like he's mm. the true African champion because he he resides in Africa and he trains out of Africa, right? And then he has won the title finally. Yeah. You know, training out of Africa. Duplessis. Drakus Duplessis was offered the opportunity to fight mm. to headline UFC 300. Mm. which is literally the biggest ever pay-per-view card, 
right? Yeah, the, that's a huge the card. USC. And apparently, if you headline that card, you know that you're going to make a lot of money. Yes. You're probably going to get the biggest payday in the history of the UFC. But he yeah. declined that offer. Yeah. He declined that offer, right? I don't know, maybe because of these injuries, you know, he fought street line, I think, in January, mm-hmm. right? But I yeah. the injuries, I see the fact that he's pushing passionately the idea of having that UFC Africa happen, mm-hmm. you know. For you, like, how, 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 do you, how do you see that panning out? How do you see UFC Africa panning out, right? And do you appreciate what Tricos de Plessis has done, you know, denying himself the opportunity to earn, you know, that money and legacy mm. for himself, headlining UFC 300, but instead mm. pushing for UFC Africa? What are your thoughts on, on what is panning out in the UFC right now? I think it's always something unique of fighting on home turf. Uh, I think that's every fighter's dream to fight on home turf. And uh, for his brand, it's also strategically smart to push for for a UFC South Africa. And um, I'm actually seeing that in the future. I see Adesanya facing him there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's has, has the possibility of even being an even bigger pay-per-view. Actually. Bigger events? Oh, wow. Well, yeah. So you feel like UFC Africa is going to be a bigger pay-per-view event than UFC 300? Depending on who the other fighters on the card are, it's possible. Mm. If you have maybe have Komaru, Chimaev 2 there. Oh, that's going to be a big one. It's awesome. going to be big. You already prepared a card. Adesaya versus Drika. <laughs> main events, Kamaru versus Chimaev 2. Co-main events. Uh, what other what, 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 guys do you want to see? You, you want to see Cameron Simon as well on that card. You want to see I don't know, who Ooh. else is from Africa? I say I'm 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 just trying to say which other African fighters you would like to see on that on that card. You have Sadiq Yusuf. You have uh, Kennedy and Zechuku. You have uh, who, who else is African? I, I'm just mentioning the Nigerian guys. You know, <laughs> David Onana, right? David Onana is from Uganda. Right, you yeah, have no, quite, yeah. You know, yeah, you have quite some big um, African I, names. I actually, that... I actually think that they should um, use some local names from the continent. And I think that's what the from UFC the does. When whenever they enter a country, they always sign some or give them some local fighters the opportunity because you have a lot of great yes. talent on the continent that hasn't been have given the chance to to display anything yet. So. Yeah, exactly. You know, that will even create a bigger audience, actually. Mm-hmm. If maybe mm-hmm. you take a Congolese fighter, it's going to fight in UFC South Africa. All the Congolese will tune in. You know, Africans in uh, sports, that's something unique. So I think that's exactly. maybe better. That, 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 that's going to be a smart move. And I think they actually, I see them doing something in that direction. I see them doing something in that direction because um, I don't know if you saw the list of fighters that they have for the Ultimate Fighters um, competition, uh, tough, uh, the tough competition. They have two South Africans on that on, on that list. They have Mark Hume and then they have some other guy, I've forgotten his name, right? And you know, the EFC, the EFC is a yeah. South Africa and they they are a really yeah. fantastic promotion in, in, in Africa. They have really fantastic guys, uh, the likes of, yeah, I think Mark Hume fought with the EFC, Gift Walker. You have um, quite really, really talented guys in in the EFC. So if they have the um, yeah. Ego Cabeza, yeah, yeah, Ego Cabeza, I'm trying to remember his yeah. name, right? So they have like really fantastic guys that if they, yeah. you know, they take them from the EFC, and you know, push them on that um, UFC Africa card is going to be something really, really, really massive. And of course, they could get some guys from Tribe Combat Sports as well. <laughs> you know, for us, it's good if, if the UFC comes to Africa. It's good because it's gonna it's gonna awaken the MMA spirit, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna the, the sport is gonna rise even more. 
so to speak. Mm. So that's yeah, great for us. Yeah, if the UFC comes fantastic. from time to time and we're going to stay there forever, so we're just going to pick up just the pieces walk up. when they leave. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that, that's actually very true. It's going to raise awareness for the sport. Yes. And, you know, yeah, it's going to like, that's really great. start to thrive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, is, it is really good to start to try in, in, in Africa. Yeah. But for yourself, for yourself, right, mm -hmm. as as an MMA fighter, or would I say ex MMA fighter, right? Like, what were the challenges you faced, you know, as a fighter? <laughs> My challenges? Like, what, 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 yeah, yeah. What were the challenges yeah. you, you faced? You mean in the cage or, or just my, 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 my fighting journey? Yeah, the fighting journey. It's, it's the tricky, tricky thing with MMA is you have to learn so many different styles. So I think combining all the styles into one, one style is, 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 was my toughest, toughest part. Um, hmm. Maybe the wrestling, if I have to pick one was the toughest to learn. Yeah. Wrestling, the wrestling. Every time I speak to people from MMA, right? I always mm. ask them, like, what do you think are the top three, the top three disciplines you need to be successful in mm. um, MMA? Because for me, I think it's wrestling, uh, jiu jitsu, and I'll say Muay Thai, kickboxing. Yeah, I agree. I agree because then you master <laughs> all the weapons. Oh. But then, like, the which needs, other disciplines, yeah. which, which which other disciplines do you think come in handy, uh, aside from those top three? Which other ones are quite relevant to the sports of mixed martial arts? I think we recently just had a showcase of how effective boxing can be with uh, Ilya Topuria winning the title. Oh, oh. wow, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it can also be, like, uh, a big advantage if you master one skill very, very, very well. Mm -hmm. That also can be a strength. Like, for example, Adesanya. For him just to learn how to not get taken down. Maybe he's not the best offensive wrestler, but maybe he can just learn the defensive part. Good enough yeah. to keep it standing where he masters the stand-up game better than anyone. Oh, wow. So it's quite a tricky, tricky question to answer because um, you have examples of both people that knows every every style and then people that master some of them. So the, 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 you you mentioned about boxing, right? Yeah, being very very key. We've seen boxers achieve like success in mixed martial arts recently. Think of people like uh, Pierre Yan. His boxing yep. is really effective. Sean O'Malley as well has like quite great boxing, right? He and fought also, yesterday. And also, the, uh, and also the fighter that that uh, won against Burns tonight or last night. Yes, uh, he's a boxer as what's well. What's his yeah. name? Madelada uh, or Jack Jack Mada <laughs> Jack, Jack Della Madalena. Madalena. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's That's also a great kind of boxer. Also. Yeah. So you have some great examples. But also wrestling is, I think if you ask every MMA fighter, they might say wrestling as the most important uh, skill to have. Yeah, because the wrestler because, the because, like because the wrestler, success. Because the wrestler, he, he uh, decides where the fight goes, standing or on the ground. So then you can control the fight better if you have that skill. Exactly, exactly. And of course, when you look at the history of mixed martial arts, right, it, yeah. the, the sport is evolving, but yes. is, wrestlers yeah. have had most success, you know, in the history of the sport. Think about yeah. the likes of DC, John Jones, right? Mm -hmm. These guys are like massive, massive great wrestlers. Even thinking about people like Khabib, look mm -hmm. at what mountain wrestling is doing, Chimaev, Islam Makhachev. Yeah. These guys oh, yeah. are all wrestlers and you know Usman they, Armagomedov. They, they, ah Usman, yeah, like they dominate people. They dominate people. And it's crazy because you know, if you can just learn a bit of striking with your wrestling, you are going to be like a really, really dominant force to to to, yeah. to, to reckon with in, in the spot, right? So we've mm -hmm. been talking about a bit about okay. I, I want to mention somebody, Clarissa Shields. 
that, yeah. that lady in the that PFL, you know, she's a great boxer. boxer. She is. She's literally the, she's literally the quotes. Quotes. So the greatest the woman greatest of all time. Of all time. <laughs> True. In boxing. <laughs> and then she's been able to translate that boxing um expertise into success, mm. you know, in mixed martial arts. But then, mm. you know, let's let's talk about UFC 299. It's still fresh in yeah. our memories, right? Just last night. What fight impressed you the most? What I was looking most forward to, I think, was the the heavyweight prospect just signed by the UFC. You know, uh, I think his name is uh, Despain. 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 Yeah, yeah. I was I was that very guy. very intrigued to just see how he was who was going to to handle handle the fight and how he looked. And uh, he looks scary. He looks as scary as ever. That guy. So that can't guy wait to is follow him in the future. That guy, his reach is menace. He's a problem. Very massive. Very, very the, guy, massive. The, the guy literally knocked out the other guy, Joshua Parisian, right? He knocked him out like, yeah. going backwards. You're fighting backwards and you're knocking somebody out. Like, how do you do that? So That's these ones are just like extremely, extremely talented. Yeah. Uh, I see he's, he's Cuban. He's Cuban. Right, yeah, I know, like the DNA. I don't know what's up with the DNA of the Cubans because the last scary person like that, you know, in the UFC that was from Cuba was uh, Joao Romero. True, oh, he was scary. I, 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 feel, I feel, I feel like that guy should, should, I don't know, he, I don't see how he's not going to become a champion. I think, I think he has the tools at least. And then, and then this is MMA, so everything can always happen. But uh, he has all the tools. <laughs> anything, anything really can happen because yeah. I see how the sport is evolving. The younger guys are taking out the older generation. It's more like mm -hmm. there's a change of the pattern right now in the sport, especially in the UFC. You saw what Ilya Topuria did to Alex Volkanovsky, right? Yeah. So. You, you're seeing how the younger guys, JDM, just beat Gilbert Burns, Chimaya mm. beat Kamar Usman, right? The mm. younger guys are coming and like taking over from yeah. the older guys, and it's 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 crazy to see. And you see that the younger guys have been able to learn like certain skill sets. Aside from being yeah. young and hungry, they've been able to learn certain skill sets that are neutralizing the the skill sets that the older guys have actually like built. You saw how the wrestlers were very dominant previously, right? The kickboxers came in and you know yeah. shook everything up, right? Yeah. The likes of Atisaya, even Tree Cos de Plessis, right? Yes. They came to shake things up, right? Yeah. So it's crazy to see as name implies mixed martial arts, right? It's mixed mm. at the end. People that have been able to master certain skill sets are not able to come in and impose their will on other people that have been a dominant force previously but yeah back to 299 the main event sean o'malley sean o'malley <laughs> versus chico vera yeah. right, what, what what are your thoughts on, I, on, on that fight i didn't think it will would be that dominant i had a feeling that sean could take it but i was i was seeing a more competitive fight I think Sean really saying. showcased his skills and, and domination in that fight. Hmm. So you thought you if was... you see the, <laughs> the, the, the the strike statistics afterwards, it was it was crushing him. It, it it was it was massive. But credit to Chito Vera, right? Oh he yeah, he's tough. Took, he's so tough. He took a lot of shots he, that would have silenced so a normal human being. I feel like that guy is not normal. He's so tough, that bro. Guy. I think he, I think he's never been finished, if I'm not mistaken. I don't yeah, think he has never been finished. finished. He has yeah. never been finished. And if there was anybody who could possibly finish him, mm. that was Sean O'Malley. But Why? then he got yeah. cracked multiple times. But oh yes, he couldn't. He could he, he he couldn't be finished. But somebody oh. that mm. defied the odds yesterday was Justin Poirier. Dustin Perry versus Benoit Saint Denis, <laughs> your boy. <laughs> Saint Denis yeah. is French, right? Like yeah, I French. know you were you were most likely supporting 
No, PST. I was supporting Dustin. Oh, why? Why were you supporting Dustin? I just love his style. His fighting style. I just love love to watch him fight. He's, he's so intelligent and uh, a great technician. Yeah. He's great to watch. <laughs> did, you, did you see the fight panning out that way? This father had it 50-50. It could have gone either way. And you saw Dustin was in trouble multiple times as well. So uh multiple times. Was a war. <laughs> Crazy war. And interesting interesting stats is that Dustin Perry has never lost twice in a row in his career. True. That is true. Yeah, his yeah, he's never lost twice in a row in his career. So his last fight, he lost to Justin Gaethje. And then it was like, yeah. I have never lost twice in a row in my career. So like, you know, but then I just felt, I, <laughs> I, I felt bad in a way that like, Dustin Poirier is ranked number three. Uh, the other yeah. guy's ranked number 12. So why mm -hmm. give number 12 to number three? Like, it's quite, you know, a margin. But he was able to prove prove himself. And he knocked, he knocked that guy out. Cold, yeah. wow. cold because he's the cold. older fighter it's uh, saint denise is a younger fighter right and then yeah. we've seen the trend of the younger right. fighters coming to beat the older fighters but he 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 has shown he has shown himself but do you think he deserves he deserves a title shot against um uh, eastern makache i want to see gaichi makache first <sighs> I want to see Gaethje see, Makachev. You, you, you know, you know what is happening with Gaethje, right? Gaethje versus Max Holloway. So, do you think Gaethje beats Holloway? I think so. I just think he's going to be too powerful for him. I think, I think that's the first time Max Holloway is going to be finished. Hmm. I think, I think Gaethje can can finish him in the later rounds. It's going to be too much. And Max is a standard fighter, volume fighter, yeah. bit, but he doesn't have doesn't have the same power. And he goes up a weight division as well. Oh, I think the leg yeah. kicks and the punches is going to be too much for him to handle. It's going to be I love fun. Max. That's, That's one of my favorite fighters. But I, but I think yeah. uh, it's it's a hard one to take in. It's a mm. hard one to take in because for me, I, I don't. I don't want to sound harsh here, but for me, I feel like that matchup does not, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me because you have mm. Max Holloway, yeah. right? From featherweights coming up to lightweight. I would rather have yeah. Max Holloway fight Ilya Topuria and have Gaethje fight Islam Kachev, right? But mm. then these are two explosive, two explosive guys. And we, we have seen what happens to people when the fights just engage you. Their, their lives never remain the same. That guy hits as hard as a truck. And kicks as hard as a truck as well. Like Everything he see, throws is power. See, 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 see what happened to... Um, what's his name now? What's his name? This guy that just went on a decline. He was the interim champion. Tony Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah, Justin Gaethje. That's sad, bro. That's that a sad story. Up. Tony Ferguson, one of the all-time greats, and he never, never recovered from that beating. It was just downward and downward from there. So I don't want to see something like that happen to Max Holloway when you can preserve him to to challenge Ilyato Puria for the title. Right? You know, Max, if I, were Max, I I agree that that. That that's a great tra trajectory, actually. Because if I were Max Holloway, I will find a way to pull out of that mm. fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, wow, that's also a scary fight. You know, for for me, Max's scary, problem scary. is he, he he gets touched too much in his fights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's 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 hitable. Very very. And with that scary power. You can only take too much. You can only take so much before you um, your body has to give in. <laughs> so I'm gonna I bet on that. Fight. I'm gonna bet for Gaethje to finish him in round in round four. Round four. 
I don't know if it's even going to get to round four. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's going to get to round four. Maybe, maybe if I just end around three, we, we never know. But uh, let's see. Let's see. UFC 300. Yeah. Are, are you excited? Are you excited for UFC 300? I am. I am. Uh, so so which, which, which one of the fights are you excited for in 300? I haven't really looked at all the fights. I just saw the... I just saw the, the the main event. What was it? A light heavyweight. Yes, for the light uh, heavyweight title, Pereira versus with Jamal versus Hill. Hill. Yeah. Who do you think wins that? I think that's an interesting fight. It's I think, I think that's fight. a good fight. It's a scary fight. Two heavy hitters. I don't see that fight going the distance. I don't. I don't what do you think? As well. Oh, I didn't. I think I think Jamal Hill has the mm. the advantage. Yeah, he's fast, fast hands, and he's a more natural light heavyweight. He is, okay. but uh, the calf kicks from Fuatan is is something different. You saw against uh, the Yiri Prasca. Yeah, but then um, Jam Jamal Hill has a more well-rounded game. I think he can take the fight to the ground. And probably do yeah. make more time on the ground. Yeah, that, that's what I think. I think if he's smart, he's not going to. Mm. He's not going to fight Poatan in a kickboxing, you know, a match mix it up. Yeah, you have to mix it up. This mixed martial arts, yeah. right? You I you can't you can't be fighting you can't be fighting Poatan at his own game. That's not going to be smart, right? That's then what he's mean. able to take it. <laughs> that's what you expect, right? What you expect, right? I think. Well, yeah, come in. I said, is that what you expect? That's what you expect. What time to win? You mean? Uh, uh, I, I, I'm talking about the strategy from Jamal. From Hill. Jamal Hill. Yes. Like, how do you see? How do you see him approaching the fight? I can't remember. I've seen him really mix it up before, because he mainly uses his hands. So what I'm thinking is also a fighter that. Has fought a lot of fights in 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 one special kind of way. It's also hard to change uh, the way of fighting from all those fights, and then one fighter going to change everything up. Also in the mind how, on how to approach the fight and everything. I think that's going to be hard. So I think always when fighters try that and they face. Um, Tough times inside inside the cage, they always fall back to the natural instincts. Um, and Portal is is not easy to take down either. But uh, but I think that's why he has that that's what he has to do to win. He has to mix it up. So the question yeah. is how well he can do that in the fight. I think mm. that's going to determine who wins. Actually, yeah. Mm. Interesting. We we saw we saw Francis and Ghana do that in this last fight for the UFC against Cyril Gann, right? Yes. We, we know Francis Ngannou to be a heavy heater, but then he makes in the wrestling to neutralize mm. Cyril Gann's goal. Because Cyril Gann is, uh, is an elite level kickboxer. Uh, yes, he is. Francis Ngannou, Francis Ngannou couldn't have been fighting him at his own game. You know, we saw he, he lost the first round. I think he literally lost the first two rounds and then came back, won the last three rounds, and, you know, yeah. retained his... Uh, his his title but speaking of francis and Gardner versus mm -hmm. anthony joshua like did you expect what you saw yes <gasps> but not this early i thought it was going to finish him maybe around five six but i saw no way for francis to win this fight of course of course of course you have the the puncher's chance if he lands something clean but uh, mm -hmm. Joshua's power and uh, Joshua's tall as well. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if everybody knows this, but he's almost two meters he's tall. Taller. Yeah, because like I, 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 I attended the the press conference in London. You know, when he came yeah. to London, when I when I saw Joshua, I was like, wow, wow. this guy he's is huge, huge. <laughs> and he is taller than Ngannou because he I, is. I, I did meet both of them. And I'm like, this guy is tall. Ngannou is 193, and Joshua is 198. 198. He 
Jesus. Yeah, 198. Uh, he's, he's huge. 198. And he has a lot of power. That guy a lot tall. of power. Yes, yeah, so definitely. You think that's what, like, made Francis fight so well against Fury because he could take those shots and just be patient and wait and and encounter him. But I guess Joshua, you can't take the same shots as you can with many other guys because it's gonna be gonna he's gonna sleep you. Hmm. So uh I think Francis is is used to maybe have the power advantage in his fights, but this time it was really a dangerous fight for him. He had the power disadvantage. I think so because uh, the technical aspect of how to create power as well is is on Joshua's side. So I'm 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 actually sh I'm quite sure that Joshua hits harder than Francis. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised. Do you think so? But if the if the if the power punch machine is anything to go by, you know, there's this machine mm -hmm. where you punch it and then he yeah. uh, it tells you the the weight of your of the force behind the punch yeah. right i think francis has like the highest the hardest punch you know ever recorded yeah. <laughs> true but he couldn't land that heavy heavy force in the course of the fight because you know it's not just about the brute force it's about the technique and how to land it there. you have to know how to land the the, the punch <clears throat> the clean punch Mm -hmm. Boxing is very, very yeah. high on technique. Yeah, very high on technique. Extremely. But then, <laughs> so somebody was telling me something that, you know, it's like Fury did not take that fight seriously. And that made Francis and Danny look extremely good. But Joshua had the advantage of hindsight mm -hmm. and took the fight very seriously. Mm -hmm. And that was why he was able to do what he, he did to Daniel. Do you buy that? I, think, I don't buy that actually. I think I think styles makes fights always. Hmm. So I think uh just Joshua's style was too much for him. It hmm. was too much for him. But Fury's style was more suiting him coming with all that power. Hmm. Because it, it it wasn't that um scary opponent in so to speak as joshua is so the strategy could be applied in a different way for him to capitalize on all that power and uh, strength that he has so speaking of fury fury versus usik how do you see that panning up that's <laughs> that's a tough one um, May I think I see Fury winning. Okay. I think we can I only Fury. wait. We can only wait. <laughs> we can only wait uh, for that. Right? What do you think? Uh, you're putting me on the spot, right? Uh, this I is tough. I, if you I had like we'll if you had like a million dollars and you had to bet on someone, who would you bet it? I'll put my I'll put my money on Usyk. To be fair, honest. I'll put my money on Usyk. I can't put my money on Fury. And in a way, I sort of feel like Fury has been ducking that fight for a while. Yeah, conspiracy conspiracy theory. You might call it, but then I feel like. Usyk has advantage because Usyk has the speed advantage. Just the same way True. I, I, I had my money on uh, Joseph Parker against um, Zhang, right? Mm. I always favor the fighter who has more agility, who has more speed, right? Mm. Uh, and they, they tend to have the advantage. But the thing is, they don't have to get caught. And when mm. you look at it, I think Fury, yeah, he's not the heaviest of heaters in, in the heavyweight TV show, you know, compared to people like uh, Joshua, like, uh, what's his name? This this guy, Tyson Fury, fought three times. Uh, Deontay Waller. 
Deontay Wilder, that guy is a heavy, heavy heater. Even people like Dylan White, they're heavy heaters, right? But Tyson yeah. Fury, yeah, he's more of a volume guy, right? But I go, you see, yeah, have you seen the, the reason I'm seeing Fury? The reason I'm picking okay. Fury is if you go and watch, if you go and watch his fight against um, this, uh, how do you call him again, Doctor Sledgehammer or something, the guy that, oh. uh, that was creating players. Klitschko, Klitschko. The, Ukrainian, the Ukrainian guy, yeah, Vladimir Klitschko, yeah. If you see that fight, I think that's how he should fight Usyk. He has a crazy reach advantage. And he has a very good jab fury as yeah, so i think he, he has to beat him that way uh, i guess yeah, while he's in the push forward because if you move back then you set up for the big power but this time i think he has to utilize his range and i've seen him do that a lot of times with with great success Hmm. I, see, I I think he, he fought some guy from Scandinavia recently and he used um, is he Hellenius or something? Yes, Robert Hellenius. The, the, the same guy Joshua fought? Uh yeah. Well I think but it knocked well, out the think, no 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 because Hellenius before. Yeah, he's, he's Scandinavian. But then I know Fury Fury fought some guy he was calling the Viking Warrior, right? Yeah, and he he was just leaning on the guy, leaning on yeah. him. So it was it was quite it was quite a crazy fight. He was using his you know reach advantage, and you know yeah. using that reach advantage, throw the jabs and lean on him. He was just putting his weight on the guy and yeah. tiring the guy out. So, but I don't think that would work for a person like Usyk. Usyk is too is too slick. Usyk is tough. He's very slick and very fast yeah, and tricky as well. Yeah, the I think that's going to be a great, great, great fight. Uh, okay, I, can't, I can't wait to see that. Maybe I, I might just be in Saudi Arabia for that fight. You know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, wow, that's great. Uh, you have the chance to go there. Uh, yeah, but then, but then you, you be, you be a happy father by then, and then I'll be yeah. happy father, happy Father's Day. <laughs> Thank you so much, bro. Oh, you're welcome, my brother. Well, let's let, let's get back to Tribe Converse Sports, right? Like, you and your co-founder, um, like, what really, really inspired you guys? And, you know, how how did you guys start up? And has the journey been like for you, for Tribe Converse Sports? It's been a long journey. It's been, I think we worked five years before we had the first event. Uh... Initially, we wanted to build just normal, conventional gyms across Africa, like a, uh, a huge gym brand. And then just one day we just sat there and then I can't remember who said it to whom, but why don't we just build a fighting league? And then the other one said, yes. And from there, we just explored that path. And then five years later, we're in Gambia with the team, with the fighters. Living out my dream in real life. Wow. So you guys, you guys are quite passionate about this thing. But how, how do you deal with the aspect of funding? Like, how do you guys fund the the promotion? We had two initial investors uh, in 2020 that enabled us to, to buy the cage and and travel and make arrangements on the ground there. And then we got four more investors. Uh, in the middle of December last year, uh, that was funding the the actual event. Interesting. And then your, your mm. investors they're quite passionate about the sports as well. Passionate about sports and passionate about Africa and uh, oh. strong belief in us that we can do this. Oh, I see. I see. I see that. That that that's that's fantastic. So, like, what what's the management setup like? You are the CEO. Like, who are the other guys behind uh, the dream? You know, they say teamwork makes the dream work. So, like, how 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 does the team come together to make you know everything work? We have um, 
the co-founder I founded with uh, is uh, the creative director. So under him, he has three, four great creatives on video and photo network that is uh, that is making all the great content that you guys see. And uh, we just we, we have uh, some graphics guy on the broadcast team with the broadcast director and uh, under him two, three, one on graphics, uh, one that's creating the, the, the broadcast itself. And then we we have a, a tech team as well that's creating this the streaming platform. Yeah, interesting. And then I, we're I, just I, getting I, the sales guys on, on board now. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm trying to get my I'm trying to get my Instagram to show what your page is like. I do, I need to I need to show the it's unique the leaders. I, I need to show our audience what what your page is like because I was highly highly impressed with the African graphics that I saw right I'm trying to see I'll try to project it on the screen shortly let me okay let me try present and this is just I the beginning I will we'll just like scratch the surface a little bit and then you guys will see a lot of great stuff coming uh, uh in the in the near future documentaries we have series we have big events coming up all for free on the platform so can you can you, can you see my screen right now yes let me okay so this is your promotion this is your instagram page right look at how africa this is let's 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 I'm go to proud the of it. <laughs> Let, let's go let's go to the reels right like when you guys were promoting the fights like i've never seen anything more africa right in terms of it doesn't Africa. exist okay let's see should i should i play this one play play uh, go go more on top okay if you go uh, we, we, top, we should, we should, then we you play the all the way to the right there this one no, all the way to the uh, other side yes this one no uh, on the other side on the opposite side do you mean this one yes yes this one so let's see okay was an african experience and that's and that's uh the uh the, the model we have for the events the african experience the african fight experience yeah so i think we I think pulled off was, pulled off that quite well there was one of the videos like you guys did introducing the fighters right and then you had the african graphics with each of those fighters which, which which one of those videos is it is it this one uh, graphics of the fighters yeah, that's the like first promo before, video yeah before the event i think he, he even like did a collaboration with the african fighters uh, podcast my my boys are uh, jibril 
and uh, Farouk, right? Go, 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 go a bit up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Where is that? Which one of these videos is it? Is it not there? Yes. Like you were introducing each 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 of the fighters, and then you had graphics for each 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 of those fighters. Let me see. For the first time in the Gambia, a professional international mixed martial arts event with fighters from Gambia, Senegal. Ivory Coast, Congo, Angola, hosted by Tribe Combat Sports. Witness these warriors live in action at QC on January 26th. Sign up and get free tickets now at tribecombats.com. Wow. Like, it's just so massive, the, the creativity is massive yeah your, your 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 team deserves you know some accolades like you stop sharing that that's right like they need to our audience needs to go follow your instagram page right <laughs> you let me thank just you so much butter. okay so yeah track cover sports go follow track cover sports on, on instagram amazing amazing african content you guys have there right it's thank it's, you so it's, much it's really fantastic you're welcome and then you know it's really, it's really great to you know to have your board you know talking about something that you're really really passionate about i'm passionate about mma myself you know uh i contribute to the african fighters podcast as well with jibril aminu and uh, farouk right and it's, it's always an amazing time where, where we sit down to talk about you know mixed martial arts you really don't know that time is you know is passing because you're mm. talking about something that you are very, very passionate about. But I think a lot of people out there, right, still have mm. issues with following the sport because they feel like, oh, it is very violent, right? Or yeah. what would you say to, 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 to people who find it difficult to follow the sport? Like, how would you, you know, bring people on board with the idea of the sports you being a promoter me i am just mm. uh, well, i uh, i'm a pundit all right yeah <laughs> i'm a, a pundit of the sport right because you know i'm into mm. other stuff right um a finance professional i'm a podcaster right mm. i speak I, sh I share people's journeys in life right but then one very interesting hobby of mine is mixed martial arts right I have, yeah. you know, studied the sport for a while. I started following mixed martial arts in like 2018, right? Mm. Then I think I was one of those people that people like Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey brought into the sport. And I think mm. at some point in my life, I think in 2021, I had a, an accident, a life-threatening accident, right? And then I had to sit at home for some months. The, I went to download GFC Fight Pass, and then I was watching, oh, wow. I was consuming the content <laughs> on USB Fight Pass. So it just made me to get to know, to watch a lot of the historic fights and yeah. get to, you know, understand the sport. And apparently, me being into finance, we do like a lot of analytical stuff, right? So I started analyzing, mm -hmm. breaking down the fights. And in no time, I discovered that, wow, from being uh, a casual, a lot of people started seeing me as a pundit, you know, analyzing these fights. There was a time that I I predicted correctly the 12 fights in both the prelims and the main card of a UFC. Yeah. Event. I predicted them cor correctly. And then <laughs> there have been many fight, fights cards where maybe I predicted like 10 out of 12 fights correctly. So people started seeing mm, me wow. like, wow, like, how, how does this guy do this? But then okay. styles okay. make fights. <laughs> styles fights. make fights. Yeah, yeah yes. like when you compare the styles, right? And you know, there are certain statistics you also compare, right? You can actually make, you know, proper predictions about these fights, right? And that was like what made me bust into the scene of analyzing MMA and then contributing to African fighters, um, talking to some of um, yeah, you know, the 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 great guys in the sports, right? I've interviewed mm. people like Tempo Gorimbo of the UFC. Uh, I've interviewed yes, people like Raphael Stotts, yeah, Raphael Stotts, yeah, former champion in Bellator, 
right? Nice. And even like pro promoters like yourself, yes. uh, there's this there's this guy, yes. the, the guy, David Feldman. David Feldman. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's the yeah. president of BKFC, Benoku Fighting Championship. I saw that on on, on on your page actually that she that she had a great yeah. conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did have a good conversation. So, so interestingly, like Pumper Sports has now become a part of my identity. Like, oh, mm. wow, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even a fighter. Interesting. And you know, you know what? I hope, and hopefully, I'll see you. But hopefully, I'll see you live on Tribe Two as well. Not just ah, Saudi. Okay. Maybe you'll come to the Gambia. Yeah, yeah, you're standing down. I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. Buy my ticket and I am coming down. <laughs> he has Bless. said it. William has said it. You guys heard it live on the Kingdoms podcast. William is inviting me to the Gambia, right? And I William. am coming. I am coming. I'm going to hold you up. We'll where, we'll arrange event? that. What where, is the next I event? I think um, it's going to be early January 2025. Because we're going to have the TV series, our own Ultimate Fighter. Not the same way, but we're going to do it quite different. Uh, something, so, something similar. It's going to be great. Something, yeah, something similar. similar, but okay. but a bit different. Uh, and then we're going to have the finale at the Tribe 2 in January. Okay. okay. I, can, I yeah. cannot wait. Uh, there's this Burner Boy song that says, Just send me your location and I'll be right there. <laughs> your boy is on vacation, no time, no time. <laughs> so, no time, just send me the location and I will be right there. It's been nice to see the Gambia, like, I hear they have beautiful sceneries, beautiful oh, yeah, food, beautiful great people. people. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a I fantastic think, place. I think we have to, to, to revisit. Drive two together before before it happens and find some arrangements. Oh wow! To get you there, yeah. Oh wow! Interesting. No problem. No problem. I'm I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> I'm up to go there. <laughs> I, I, I have to let to you escape the, the, this weather, bro. I can't I can't let you live in this weather for too long. I have to I have to take ah, you to the sun. Ah. <laughs> The weather is it's terrible. It's terrible. I need some African sun. I need some African sun. I think last last was it last year in November, I traveled to Morocco, right? And then uh, I was somewhere, uh, yeah, was it Agadir? But then I wore the UFC, you know, I had this UFC top, UFC uh, sweatpants, right? I was wearing my UFC sweatpants. And then I saw this guy, he was speaking French, he's like, UFC, UFC. He was like, well, like he thought I was a fighter. And then he came to me one day to stop a picture with me. I was like, wow, like this is how massive. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, no problem. Uh, he took a picture with me. I was like, okay. <laughs> it, was quite, it, was, it was quite interesting. You also have to, have to tell your audience that if you sign up at tribecombats.com, then you'll get the message and the, the email when the platform is ready. So you all can watch Tribe One for free on the platform. Uh, okay, the streaming platform, right? Yes. So if you go to tribecombats.com and just sign up for free, then you'll get the email when it's when it's launched and then you can all go and watch the broadcast there. Okay, so everything is for free. Tribecombats.com. Okay, let me display that. As the same name as the Instagram. Okay, Tribe Combats Sports, right? Not sports, just the uh, S at the end. Okay, tri Tribe Combats. Yes. Dot com. Okay, that is T R I B E C O M B A T S. Yes. yes. Okay, dot com, right? Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And then you'll just see a, a small form there. Just just fill it out, and then and then we have your contacts to, to, to let you know the updates. 
Okay, I need to. Good. Is that correct? You can see that at the bottom of your screen. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. So, uh, our people should go there and you know sign up. Amazing, amazing content from these guys, right? So, so, so okay. uh, our vision, our like the thing we have observed is that every MMA league that's uh, either starting or that has been around for a long time, mm -hmm. they all try to copy the same blueprint on how to make MMA events the same way, only that. UFC has the most money, so whatever the other ones are making is going to be looking like a B product or a C product. Exactly. So I haven't seen any innovation. The same music being played in the in the at the venue, the same setup, the same broadcast, the same everything. So our vision is to make something new, you know, like like the iPhone. Oh wow! Exactly. Like, you, 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 you already answered the next question I had for you because the next question I had for you was what sets Tribe Combat Sports apart from other anime, you know, promotions like now? the African what Fight Experience. Sets you guys apart. You get the raw African Fight Experience. You get the African culture. You get the African DNA wrapped within Scandinavian frames. Hmm. You'll get to see yeah. something you've never seen before. So to answer your question from earlier on how to get fight fans or get new fight fans, people that think this is a scary sport, to come over and, and, and enjoy the sport like, like, like we do, I think the first thing is to educate. But uh, in addition to educate, we also bring culture. So it's different. We have, we have different... Um, different ways to reach the audience than just the sport itself. We're going to make documentaries. We're going to make uh, different kind of content that's consumable for fight fans, but not just fight fans. Mm. So we're going to go to a wider, wider, broader uh, audience with different types of content. Mm. Interesting. So, like, you'll be able to like bring people from like different works of life into the combat sports scenery, right? And then I think like you work with people like ourselves, right? Also, some people from other works of life are able to like relate to us. So, for example, for me, I'm a finance professional. Like, I have been able to like convince certain other finance professionals to get in on the sport, right? I've yeah. been able to convince people from other works of life, people, my friends that are healthcare professionals, for example. Mm. to get to watch the sport there's one of my friends uh she, she's cameroonian and I, I know she's going to be watching this one right that is maya ikango maya ikango mm. became a fan of the sport because i introduced her to the mixed martial arts and then the first day i i, I played uh some from the ufc she was yeah. very very angry she was extremely angry like what the hell? Like, what kind of man introduces a woman <laughs> to? She was calling it wrestling, and I'm like, no, it's not wrestling. It's mixed martial arts. She said, no, they're all the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, how can you, you know, still cage fighting? And I'm like, okay, you know what? Yeah, you're from Cameroon, right? Uh, there's this Cameroonian guy who's in the UFC, and he's making waves. He's a champion. He was a champion at the time, and then I showed yeah. her Francis Ngannou. And do you believe that she now became obsessed <laughs> with this sport because of Francis Ogadu? Yeah. Every time she's shouting, Francis Ogadu! <laughs> like, she felt like Francis is like a brother or like a cousin of hers that she could relate to, right? So True. that being said, like, a lot of people are able to relate to, like, certain individuals in the sport, right? Because yes they share the same heritage or they share the True. same background right and then those people are able to convince them to get into the sport and then you know this that became a person who started following up on the pay-per-views like she'll reach out to me sometimes i say okay there's a fight coming up i'm like okay interested is this <laughs> you <laughs> telling me <laughs> she started to learn new up. stuff yeah i thought like she was teaching you like yeah and interestingly she's a teacher right she's a teacher yeah. and 
And then she started like studying the sports because, you know, when people that are intellectuals start watching the sport, they start learning mm. the rules, start learning different things. And then they start asking yeah. you questions and then you start educating them. And before you know it, they start even bringing certain wow. things to your notice that you probably did not notice about the sport. And then you'd be like, wow, wow, wow. That's just just, That's just wow interesting so exactly. like certain people bring in certain people into the sport and then like it spreads mm. it spreads just like that because yeah. she too has been bringing her own crowd into the sports as well right like I That's how we start. Person. <laughs> yeah so i have my own disciples my disciples have their own disciples <laughs> but <laughs> but there are That's certain great. people that i I have not been able to convince to get into the sport, right? Like they're just certain people. Like my mother, for example. Like mm. my mother is you know, she she just she she's always baffled about how do you enjoy <laughs> people eating? And so she's like, she can never For her it's just true violence. That. For her yeah. it's just true violence, right? Yeah. For her, she's like, oh. <laughs> and it's how you know I'm in Nigeria and you know I'm probably at home. And I think last time I was probably at home, Israel Adesanya was fighting. She was like, Oh, now your boy is mm. fighting. Okay, God will be with him, <laughs> God will give him success. <laughs> but, but I'm not with you. <laughs> 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 and then, uh. and then she, and you know, another thing is the fact that it's usually in the night. You know, for mm. us in, in Europe or Africa, right? It's usually mm. late at night. And then she'll stick up on me and be like, how are you keeping up with watching <laughs> sports <laughs> in the night? She's like, he was just really passionate about these guys. I'm like, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> and, then, and then I see her waking up in the morning and then she's asking me, did your boy win? <laughs> she was, like, she was, she's, then, she, she's, she's kind of interested. Yeah, kind of interested. She's like, did your boy? So she can be persuaded then. Yeah, because and I think the bias is because the bias is because the boy is Nigerian, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you see how Kamaru's man, Israel Adesanya got a lot of Nigerians into the sport, right? A lot of Nigerians do not like you know combat sports really. But then when they see that their own person is succeeding in the sport, they're like, Oh yeah, it's our boy. When what they actually watch is just the highlights. They say, oh, did you see that guy knock this guy out? Like, okay, okay. Like, a lot of Nigerians are reaching out to me when Easy knocked out Pereira out. Mm. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm a boy. When you're successful, you are their boy. When, yeah. <laughs> when you get beaten, you're no longer their boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's quite interesting, you know, like, a lot of eyes are getting to the sport, right? But um, Yes, every day, I think. I, I feel like the sport is not as violent as people, you know, paint it to be because there are rules, right? There are rules. It's a lot of, uh, like the, the thing in MMA is you get cut easier because of the elbows and the knees. So it looks more violent, like visually, but it's mm-hmm. it's not as violent as people think. I agree with you. It looks more violent than it is. Mm-hmm. But then I, I think DC was saying something that MMA is probably not as violent as boxing i agree he because um uh, like you see the statistics as well as like brain damage in boxing is yeah. extremely more high than mma fighters mm-hmm. because you have so yes. many other things you can you can uh, utilize in mma but in boxing you just have like body punches and punches to the head so the the punches, punches you take to the, to the head, head are so much more punches through an entire career career than an mma career hmm. so then when, when, when you think about it you think about the the style or the rules mm. the, the 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 rule sets right the set of rules yeah. for boxing if you mm. get an if you get knocked down in boxing they do yes. a, a, a 10 uh, a 10 is this standing 10 counts or something what, what do you yeah. that, that count to 10 right yes you're counting to 10 to let somebody stand up to get beaten yep. up again right whereas <clears> in <throat> mma the fight is allowed to finish you off and you know that okay yep. yeah you're done right true but 
the funny thing, the reverse psychology is that it is actually safer for you to be finished up, finished up once yeah. than to be finished up multiple times. It is. Because when oh, you get beaten people. down, like, like uh, and, and the ref starts counting, that means that you already have a concussion. Mm -hmm. So to take more punches to already a, 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 a damaged brain, that's extremely dangerous. I, th I think there was a boxer that died not too long ago, actually, a few months back. From I don't, I'm not sure if it was in Asia or... Yeah, it's very dangerous. Nothing to be played with. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's really, really crazy. It's really crazy. Health and safety is very important. And speaking of health and safety, like how do you guys ensure, you know, um, health and safety in uh, tribe combats? We had a lot of doctors at site, three doctors and some nurses there. Uh, and then uh, a hospital available and uh, an ambulance also waiting outside. Oh, wow. So, so everything was already set for... God was with us, so nobody's needed anything of that <laughs> this time. But, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. but but then what was the sanctioning? What are the sanctioning oh. bodies like? What's the regulatory bodies in uh, in 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 Africa, in Gambia to be specific, right? Because the the Gambia is where you are organizing these events, right? So who yes. are the regulators and do you, comparing the the professionalism of the regulators uh, to what yeah. is obtainable in Europe, like what's what's the standard? So you have now, you didn't have it when we started, uh, our Gambian MMA Association. Uh, but we had to go through minister, ministries and, and stuff like that to get the, the allowance. Okay. So that took some time, but um, now it's it's more structured now, so it's going to be a cooperation with the federation next time okay okay and then um things things like health and safety are they like well emphasized uh, by the regulatory uh, bodies then then how about drug testing for example is always a very very massive interest in drug testing yeah because you need to create a balanced you know pain field for for the fighters what's of what's course. the drug test what was the drug testing scene like around uh, the African? Uh, we didn't have any drug fight. testing this time. No drug testing Whoa. this time because because it that costs a lot of um, a lot of money. So uh, we'll have to do that uh, later on. But hopefully, next event we can access that because I, I feel that it's very important to have everything as safe as possible of course for all fighters involved mm -hmm. some fighters get to have like massive massive advantage over their competitors but this, so you don't want to go time, down. but it's but it's the same as all the mma leagues in europe almost none of them have drug testing whoa so everybody's That's, juiced up Hopefully not, but uh, oh, it's possible. crazy, crazy! Wow, because in MMA, even yeah, in... MMA, MMA is crazy. It's a crazy game. It's a crazy sport, you know. But even, even, you, with but even UFC Yusada. now, they don't have drug testing. Even UFC now, there's uh, a UFC no, or they, uh, they, have they, separate they switched, ways. They switched, they switched from Usada to uh, what's the uh, name of the new one? I think World test the world anti-doping something something right yeah. they switch to, they just switch to another company but then apparently yeah. you see how the drug testing in place right but people are kind of scared or maybe it's a conspiracy theory that the new company are not going to be as strict as usada because you started yep. were very strict and high-handed right yes that's why you know people like john jones uh tj de la shore like had issue had Ishi Conor mcgregor them, even right? Yeah, Conor McGregor withdrew himself from the testing pool, right? Because yeah, he, he 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 needed to take some certain substances to 
yeah. uh, capitalize his um, healing process, right? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's, so as well. It's, it's very, it's, well, 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 please let, 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 let it show we have the drug testing this time around because it's quite an unfair advantage. Look, 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 look at what, um, what happened with John Jones against DC. Right. Yes. Like he, it was. It was. It was unfair. And you know, TJ Dillashaw. We saw like when he came off the drugs, right? Like he was mm. a different. He was a different kind of fighter. Yeah. Yes. So we can see that you know it gave it gave him a high level of advantage over the competitors. And you know, it's quite it's quite unfair to to the other people you're competing against. It's good. It's, it's good. It's good to be to be on the balance. Uh, you know, playing field. But, we I hope agree. for we hope for you know improvements, right? Because apparently it's something that the, the, the sanctioning bodies should actually take seriously and put you know F uh yeah put measures in place basically to ensure that that is actually um, instituted uh, aside from you know, the promotions yeah, between between the states. But then like what advice would you would you give to people who are interested in pursuing MMA professionally? What advice do you give them? You mean you mean that, that that depends if if they're from Africa or from uh, uh -huh. Europe. Because okay, so you have because unfortunately, not every African kid or or young adult that want to pursue this career has the opportunity yet. So that's what I I want to I want to make make possible. But uh, you should research. Uh, the MMA gym in your country, and just just go from there. I think that's the easiest way to just just get started and just get to learn learn uh, how this sport is conducted and um, like get a feel of it. I think you have to go to an organized gym and, and start there. And you can also always write to us on Instagram as well. If, mm, if you are an experienced part. fighter or if you want to fight in Africa or just get in contact with us and we can we can start some conversations and make something happen. Mm, interesting. So um, how about promoters, fellow promoters like yourself as well? Like, would you have any piece of advice for them? For my, comp for my competition? Yes, uh, you know the 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 <laughs> they say the sky is big, you know, enough for 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 the stars, right? Yeah, there are people who probably want to set up something in Nigeria, in mm. other places, right? Even in Asia, Even in Asia. right? Yep. Yeah, because mixed martial arts is not as big as it can be in Asia. I agree. Because I think if you have if you, if you have the courage. Sports. If you have the courage and if you have the the dream to create a combat sports league, I I really encourage you to go. Just go ahead and and push for it because uh, for me at least it's 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 the greatest choice I've ever made, and uh, I support you all. I want to want to go the same path as as I did as I've gone, and uh, let's make it happen together and and, and bring MMA to the world interested interested uh mma is not you know for everybody to go pro or even like do amateur mma right mm. but then like lovers lovers of the sport like do you believe everybody should train right and do you think um training like benefits individuals you know beyond just a physical fitness like oh yes what advice yeah would you give to to people in terms of training i think it's the greatest greatest form of training that i've ever done like like fitness wise but also uh self-confidence wise hmm. um i think it made me it has made me a much calmer man and uh more more stable and uh, I encourage everybody just to know some some self defense. I think that's something I encourage everybody to learn. Mm, A lot of great things comes with that. So, 
like when when you show you you know how to defend yourself there's a level of confidence it gives to you as yes. a, as a person yeah like I, I i know that i know that for sure because like yeah at some point i i, I was training um i think taekwondo right and then like i discovered that with the physical fitness with the mm. techniques right I'm quite confident that I can hold my own, I can defend oh, myself, can defend myself, right? And then yeah. it gives me that confidence that, okay, yeah, I'm good, I'm cool, right? And then, you know, there's something that is counterintuitive. Bullies. Bullies are people, tend to be people that lack self-confidence. Always. And, you know, want to impose their own will on other people or mm. try to compensate for that lack of self-confidence that they have right mm. to to draw other people down right yeah. and bullying has been a serious issue you know among kids you know across the world especially mm. in um, school settings joe rogan said something uh, some time ago he was like one solution to the problem of bullying is teaching bullies how to fight teaching you know yeah. kids generally how to fight like if kids know how to fight they will not end up being a bully that is if you know how I to fight that, yeah. right you won't be a bully yeah. yeah but to a lot of people it doesn't make sense i think um the thing that happens when you when you learn how to fight and you train how to fight is you okay. get so much respect for the art of fighting and also you get out a lot of energy in the gym mm. which which i think humbles you also a bit to, to train fighting humbles you in in many ways and uh you get the respect for what it means to fight mm. so you don't take it to the streets because of the respect, the humbleness, I think that makes you uh, not wanting and needing to fight on the streets. Like to be humble in, in, in a fighting sense, it's, it's, it's something unique if you never experienced it before. <laughs> I, think <that's, laughs> I think that's the important yeah. thing to experience as a man, mm. especially. Exactly very very true mm. very very true like when you when you test your will against another person's will like apparently like i've been inspiring situations and then you see that yeah there are certain people who with their technique will humble yeah, you yeah. right yeah you might feel like you're more powerful than certain people but then you know technique technique is very very important right and, and, that's and also if you that. know that you can beat beat somebody up if you know that because you have trained it for many years, you have mm -hmm. sparred many times, then you don't need to show it. You just know. You don't need to show it. Just you know. <laughs> because you know what? Uh, people fighting in the clubs and, 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 and on the streets, they always fight out of fear. It's mm -hmm. always fear that makes them aggressive. Because you mm -hmm. see a lot of fighters, there's the, mo the most calmest guys you can ever meet. Yeah, you have that calmness. Yeah, it's always insecurity. So by making you more secure and and and, and raise your self confidence, it also makes you more calm. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. That that's very 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 true. And I think for for, for me, like one one thing I love about you know the physical training is how it translates into helping your physical health as well mm. Mm. you know like ex exercise is very very key very important oh, right? yes. in making you healthy because to me like i've seen the difference between you know when i was taking exercise seriously and when mm. i wasn't taking exercise seriously like there's a difference in how it makes you feel in your body how mm. you how you feel about yourself as well right like yes. it's just it's just it's just it's just a massive massive difference and it's always good to chase fitness <laughs> it's, it's good to chase fitness it helps you to live a healthier life yes 
right? I agree. Wow. So, um, in terms of um, memorable MMA moments, right, or experiences mm-hmm. for you, like, what would you see? What would you see have been your top like memorable moments uh, in the sport? In my own career or in the sport in general? In the sport in general. When Connor knocked Aldo out. Oh, wow. That was a crazy, that was a crazy moment. And also when Khabib and Connor fought, that was the build up to that fight was something I've never seen before. And the anticipation in my, in, with all my friends and, and everybody around me was, I've never seen people that engaged before in my life for a fight. Wow. Did, did you watch a press conference? Connor Khabib. Khabib Connor? Yes. The pre fight yes, press conference. I did. In, in my opinion, that's still the most interesting uh, press conference ever yeah. in the UFC. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was very that's the most. Yeah. It, it was very, 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 very hilarious. Very hilarious yeah. press conference. And yeah, it was all heated up. I think they, they, they did the, the highest pay per view numbers ever in the UFC. Yeah. Over yeah, 2 million, I think. 2.4 million um uh, pay-per-view buys you know and that's why you know i was trying to convince khabib to come back you know <laughs> to come yeah. back hey, let, let's possibly see a, a corner versus khabib too that would have been massive but you know big 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 ups to khabib for uh, you know staying put in <laughs> with his retirement or uh, do you think do you think that if khabib has stayed maybe two three more fights maybe somebody would have figured him out i can't see who can beat him can't see does he who? already beat justin poirier he beat gaichi he beat connor he beat barboza mm-hmm. i don't i don't see any style beating him Especially not at that time. At that time, I don't see it. But, then, but I think it was uh, smart of him because he, he went out on top. So everybody remembers him as as, as the best. Yeah. People tend, to, people tend to finish their careers too late. Like Tony exactly. Ferguson, for example. I think now it's uh, he, should have, he should have been done years ago. But then, speaking of Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson was meant to fight Khabib in the spring. How would you how, how do you think that would have you know played out? Ferguson and Khabib. Prime, yeah, prime Ferguson versus prime Khabib. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Khabib will take him down and yeah. and maul him. <laughs> <laughs> we think the same thing. <laughs> we think the same exact thing. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy how we're thinking the same exact thing. Like, I just, when people ask about how that would have played out, I always think that, you know, Ferguson would have gotten more by Khabib. I really don't see who, who would have beaten him. And, you know, there were questions about whether Oliveira would have mm. probably been a nightmarish matchup for Khabib. But I think um, that's a great Islam, fight. That's Islam, a great fight. Yeah. That's a great Islam fight. answered the question for us. I think Islam answered that question for us because Islam Khabib basically did. is carrying on Khabib's, Khabib's legacy. But Islam also is a better striker than Khabib, I think. A better stand-up fighter. If you say so, if you say so. Yeah, yeah. He his striking looks, you know, more decent than Khabib's striking. But, yeah. you know, Khabib just had this, you know, unorthodox style of striking yeah and he's he's his style of striking is suited towards you know confusing you and hiding the timing of his takedown because we all you all we all know that khabib is always going to shoot for that takedown is always going to take you down but the problem is you don't you don't see when it is coming that's so crazy like Every opponent of his knows exactly what he's gonna do, but you can't stop it. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's gonna shoot every time until he gets you down, but you can't stop it. That's mm-hmm. I've never seen that dominance before. And he's not even and trying to hide he, what he's gonna do. 
He's, he's not trying to he's not trying to hide it you know is that unorthodox it distracts you with the crazy unorthodox you know striking before he yeah. it's for the takedown but when you look at islam mm. you look at islam Vogue, Vogue was able to read you know the timing of islam's takedowns yeah in the first, first time? fight yeah yeah the first fight i think you can fight was. islam on a short notice notice time frame I think yes. it would be interesting if you had a had a full camp uh, in, in the second fight. Mm. But uh, yeah, we'll but never we, find out. We now. never know. Yeah, we will we'll never, never find out. <laughs> that rivalry is closed. <laughs> it's closed. That <laughs> it's closed. To, it's, 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 it is closed to good. But me, I don't know. Maybe I, I am biased, right? But then I think like one of my most memorable moments in the whole of mixed martial arts is I decided knocking out uh, Pereira. Oof. you know yeah uh, yeah that, that's like, that's a how, crazy moment right there how can that's you crazy. how can you ever how can you ever forget that and with the arrow celebration that's, you know, that's insane i was screaming in my living room wow and that was a knockout of the year <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that was that was literally that was literally the knockout of top, the year like it must be top yeah. 10 of all time top 10 knockout of all time mm-hmm Mm -hmm. like how how you can't beat that how how do you beat that you can beat that so but then i, I am biased because you know alessia is my he's my, he's my fellow nigerian and jb jb like jb likes to call me president is your like this fans association <laughs> but also the connor That's aldo that. knockout was crazy yes nobody saw it coming that early the build-up was so long I think they build it up for over a year. Mm -hmm. And then only for it to just end just like that. 14 because, seconds. And I think that, that was what made um Connor uh chap chap, right? No, that's that's the first uh, the first belt. The uh, second the one came belt. against uh, Eddie Alvarez. Uh, uh LD, oh sorry, LD Alvarez, yeah, yeah LD Alvarez, yeah. He knocked he yeah, knocked yeah. out LD, Eddie Alvarez as well. Yes, wow. he finished Connor, him. Connor, <laughs> Connor, Connor is hall, hall of Fame material, you know. Like, Connor is hall there's of no fame. way, there's no way you don't put that guy in the Hall of Fame, right? But the way it was great when he was, yeah, he was great when he while he lasted. Let, let's just put it that way. Yeah, in his prime, he, while he lasted. But do you think? Do you, do you think he's gonna keep his word and fight Chandler, or he's just he's gonna fight again? Do you think he's do you think he's gonna fight with Michael Chandler, or he's wasting Chandler's time? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I hope he does. I think that's an interesting fight. If he takes it seriously, Chand of course. Chandler has been patiently, patiently waiting for that fight, and it just seems like that fight is not happening. I have a weird feeling that. Uh... Maybe he's not going to fight him. I have that feeling as well. And I think it's yeah. just going to be quite painful. It's just going to be quite painful to Chandler, you know, waiting out. There are other people Chandler could have, you know, fought with yeah. in that division. But he's just been waiting for that big, that big payday. That's that. That's, yeah. not, that's not a very, that's not a very nice one, you know, to, to Chandler. But big, big ups to them. I, I wish I wish them well. I wish <laughs> I wish them well. But really, like, how do you see the future of MMA evolving? You know, as a sport and as an industry, you know, globally. How do you see it evolving? You know, I think it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. It has, as you mentioned earlier, it has still a lot of growth left. Uh, it hasn't really fully touched South Africa uh, yet, and and Africa, of course, is. It's just now being touched by it. And as you mentioned, also in Asia, a lot of places there to grow the sport. And India, of course, uh, hasn't even entered the scene yet or just barely. That's true. And India has so a we massive have, population. Uh, oh, yes, massive population. And China, still a lot of, lot of growth there. And also big, big martial arts cultures in Asia. So um, 
I think uh, with the right strategy and the right product, I think that's an interesting market to look at. Hmm. Interesting. But then for Tribe Combo Sports, like what what's what what are your goals and aspirations for the foreseeable future? Our goals uh, is to become the largest combat sports platform in the world. So we have uh, we have um, MMA, and we're going to bring K one the, as the second sport. Okay. And then we're going to enter into boxing and uh, wrestling and jiu jitsu as well to make this platform whole and uh, interesting to be a part of and subscribe to. Wow. It's, it sounds similar to what um, one one championship are doing. You see, one championship yes. are not just about MMA. Yeah, they do Muay Thai and they kind do of yeah, like other yeah other, other stuff. And uh, how about how about do you see the possibility of cross promotions like sometime in the future? I don't think that's too interesting for us. Okay, um, so you just want to stick with your promotion. I want to build a strong castle uh, with. The payment, or hopefully soon, it will be high enough for African fighters to not uh, have to leave the continent to make a good living. Mm. I want them to make a good living uh, in their own neighborhoods and in their own countries and continent as well. That's my that's my highest dream on the athlete side to make a platform strong enough to keep them in Africa. Hmm, interesting. You seem quite passionate about Africa, right? Do you, do you have any advice for African leaders, you know, in order to transform, you know, uh, Africa to into something that you'd love to see? So what's, what would you wish for African leaders to do or what advice do you have for the African leaders? I think uh, cooperation is essential. Uh, remove the barriers and uh, let us cooperate to, to give something great to the youth, the next generation, uh, opportunities, entertainment, and, and love and spread the culture to the whole world uh, of, of Africa's greatness and beauty. And uh, let's make something great happen together. Interesting. So what are your uh, or, or, or what are your pieces of advice to young people out there for them to achieve success in life generally like as as a big brother or as in an life <laughs> yeah yeah in life generally not just you know in sports in, in sports or just just in life just in life in life generally i think i think you first have to realize that everything is possible everything is 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 actually possible and i think the most important thing is to follow your passion because when you follow your passion that's also the thing you're, you're going to be greatest at because you're going to put love and the right energy into it so i think uh, don't be scared to follow your passion you don't have to know everything you can find the people that knows the stuff you don't know to make your passion come true and alive. And uh, that's my greatest piece of advice. Follow your heart and follow your dreams. And uh, be brave, it's scary to, 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 to go a path that uh, nobody has gone before or that the system tells you it's, it's, it's not advisable. But if it's your passion and your dream, you have to own your dream and own your passion. And Please follow it. Life is too short to not follow it. Oh, interesting. So I have I have a, a tradition at the end of the pod, right? Uh, the previous guest yep. leaves a question for the current guest, and the current guest does leave a question for the next guest. So the previous guest uh, is um, Ivy Annie Bogu. She's an immigration consultant in Canada, and then mm -hmm. she asks this question: Like, what would you do if? You you were president for one day, that's 24 hours. Like if you were president of your country, what policy would you implement, you know? 
in that one day of being president? Hmm, that's a great you question. Just, uh, you have just one day to first, be president. First thing, the first thing. Hmm. Wow. And, and, and then you mean like an African country, right? My African country? My uh, any country, country uh, any country, any country you want to pick, every coast of Finland. You see, this is a problem we're having two countries <laughs> because, because, because Africa's problem is that all the talent leaves the continent like doctors, lawyers, everybody leaves, like yourself. You're, you're you don't want to go back. Ah! You see, because, because, because they, no, no, because, because if you want to talk to me, you, <laughs> there's a joke, I mean, there's like, a joke we have in Nigeria. If you want to talk to me, don't talk through the corners. Talk to me directly. Talk to me directly. Don't go through the corners. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're but talking I, to me and saying that African I, talent are no, leaving. No. Is it just like yourself? No, but, I, <laughs> but uh, but but, it, but it's true because the structures are not set for you guys to stay. Um, yes, exactly. That, that's so I, so I think that's that's the thing that's gonna elevate the continent to higher, higher, higher levels is if we can keep all that talent there and make that talent come back and work work in their respective countries. So I think uh, uh, it must be some incentive for you guys to travel back. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that is. <laughs> But, well, but something in, in, in that direction, I think. Yeah. Mm. Something in that direction. Interesting. Like, it just reminds me of what the president of, of Nigeria, the current president, um, Sinubu, uh, was saying mm -hmm. sometime recently. He said he wants um, all the young people who have, you know, traveled out <laughs> of the country yes. to diaspora, right, to come back yeah. and come out work in the country. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> like... <laughs> I think before we started this the, these podcasts, like we're talking about yeah. how like I I make more money right in Europe, even though I don't like the weather, I don't like yeah. the food. But then when I think about the fact that I make more money in Europe, like you just keep yeah. on grinding. Okay, just 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 face face the hustle, right? But yeah, like if I were I making the, the same amount of money back home, like I'd rather be back home, right? You see, because the, yeah, you have your people, you have you know the good weather, you know, the culture. It's you know quite quite you know friendly, welcoming. It's difficult mm. being in another person's you know land and try to to make something out of your life, out of your career. You always mm. need to work twice as hard, right? But then when you're back yeah. home, like you feel that love and you know that. You know, you just love being around your people. You that comfort, basically, yeah. You know, but we are forced to get out of our comfort zone, and you know, embrace being comfortable with mm. being uncomfortable. I agree. That's, <laughs> that's well said. Well put. Uh, yeah, we 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 are now comfortable being uncomfortable. But it's fine, it's fine, we'll cope. But, we'll but cope. I think that's also that's also uh, something um you grow from also. Like imagine all the knowledge you have gained now. Yes, exactly, exactly. Like so when I you, know that so, I, so when I, I one day go back now, you really have a lot of stuff to bring to the table. Yes, yes, to, to contribute, right? Because mm. I remember something my, my, my father used to tell us growing up, like you cannot empower your people uh until you have empowered yourself right it's always mm -hmm. uh, essential to empower yourself and how do you empower yourself the knowledge you know the competences the skills right the experience that you you yeah. have you know in this you know foreign countries and i for one for, i am very very grateful being given the opportunity you know to practice as a chartered accountant you know in England, yes. right? It's a different mm. experience, like a different level of exposure, right? And then I know that, oh, I have learned like a lot of things, you know, that have equipped me to be able to like better, you know, myself and mm. better my people, better my country, right? Yeah, yeah. we also yeah, like need to be grateful for like these, you know, um, experience that we have, you know, in this uh, foreign uh, countries as well. 
Ah, oh, that being said, that being said, like, what question do you? Oh, I want to ask you something before mm-hmm. I ask you the question you want to leave for 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 uh the next guest, like family life, family life. We talked about you know your beautiful wife, you mm. know. Mm child of the way like how do you achieve family you know work-life balance like how do you how do you achieve that because i have a wife that's very she's very understanding and very supportive uh she wants to be a stay-at-home wife so she we have like our own roles like i i provide and she she takes care of the 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 household and uh soon our first child uh, while I go and, and, and work and provide. So uh, we're a great team in that sense. We never step on each other's toes. We just build build each other better. Fantastic. Wow. Mm. Love and support. That's fantastic. Work. Love and support. No. That's, that's essential. <laughs> very, very essential. And of course, you know, uh, happy, happy woman, happy home. That's true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> happy woman, happy hope. Well, wow, let's get to the question you want to leave for the next guest. What kind of question would you like to leave for the next guest? What question I have? I, I want you to ask the next guest. Mm-hmm. Mm. What is what is the best advice you've ever gotten on your journey hmm. what's the best yeah, advice you've ever gotten on your journey that is a deep question wow i'm happy i'm not the next guest <laughs> i'm happy i'm the host to the next guest of course the next guests have their they have their work cut out for them and you know like i'm grateful having you you know today i'm really really grateful thank you so I much thank you very much right but before you leave before you leave who are you going to give a shout out to you know before you leave today i want to give a shout out to my co-founder usman so for always being by my side and uh, believing in me and supporting me and teaching me all you have taught me through the years for for us to get to where we are now interesting interesting Usman shout out to Usman shout out to <laughs> Usman to you. okay so who else who else who else who else is going to be on this list before we drop the mic who else is I said who who else is going to get a shout out before we drop the mic before we say goodbye to our audience I have to give a shout out to uh, also Alex on the team. He's our uh, COO, a very, yeah. very resource, resourceful guy, always finds a way out of anything. Uh, yeah. Oh, he has taught me a lot of stuff as well and uh, a great guy. Interesting, fantastic. Teamwork makes a dream work, right? Wow, so shout out yes. to Alex. But Alexander, not Volkanovski. <laughs> not Volkanovski. <laughs> Alexander Bonaparte, Alex, isn't he? Oh, Bonaparte. Alexander, not Pereira, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and not Pantoja as well. <laughs> not Pantoja as well. <laughs> I love Pantoja. You have a lot of Alexes, right? Alexander the Great. Wow, yes. fantastic one, fantastic session today. Uh, once more, I want to say a very, very big thank you to you, William. I did not mention your surname because I don't know how to pronounce that name. How do you pronounce your surname? <laughs> it's a difficult name, but you can just use my middle name, Zalo, my my Oh, uh, we, we we want to hear that that surname. Please help us. <laughs> So, so for future reference, so okay, that when we the president that. of Ivory Coast, I'm like, oh yeah, this guy was. <laughs> then I will say it in Norwegian. Okay, I will say it in Norwegian. Varen Scholl. Varen Scholl. Varen Scholl. Did I get Varen Scholl? Ah, interesting. <laughs> I'll, I'll, 
when I grow up, I'll be able to pronounce it. Okay, that's a hard name to pronounce. <laughs> good <laughs> good luck. Tough word. Thank you very much, my brother. God bless you. Bless Wish you, you, brother. Thank best, you so much. You know, greater heights, greater heights, success, you know, in all of your endeavors. Same to you, and same to you, bro. Great success for tri uh, combat sports. You know, bless, bro. Enjoy. Bless. Thank you so much. And we talk soon. Okay. okay. And of course, see you in Gambia soon. See, see you in Gambia soon. <laughs> see you in Gambia. Okay.